Well, we're on our morning walk and today we're among the buttercups. They're also known as spearwort and many other names. And today they are filling this field. I don't know if you can see, this field is just full of buttercups. They got their name because people thought that if you held a buttercup under your chin, it meant you liked butter. But it's actually reflective. And if the sun's shining, then it'll be yellow. And people also believed that if cows ate buttercups, then uh, the milk would be yellow. But it's nothing to do with buttercups. Buttercups are actually uh, poisonous to cows. They're bitter and cows don't like them. There's many varieties of buttercups. There's meadow buttercups like these here. Uh, there's creeping buttercups, which you probably have in your garden. Uh, there's buttercups that grow tall. There's about 4,000 uh, in the buttercup family, including some of your uh, flower bed plants. The thing about buttercups is that they're not an indication of anything good. Buttercups thrive where the land is bad. Buttercups thrive where the ground is hard and compact and with a low pH. And so if you have buttercups, it's not a sign that things are going well, it's a sign that things are going very badly. And <laughs> judging by this field, this is a very poor field. I mean, this field is very, very poor. There's, there's uh, almost no decent grazing in it at all. The only way to defeat them is uh, to plow the land and, and make the land inhospitable to them. Put some, maybe some uh, fertilizer on it and uh, something that will uh, lower the pH. Now, or increase the pH. I was wondering what in our lives are like buttercups, what thrive, what thrives when things go wrong. And there are lots of things that thrive when things go wrong, you know. Uh, bad tempers, <laughs> bad language and things like that. Well, I thought, nah, let's, let's not go down that path. What else thrives when things go wrong? Well, surveys more over the recent weeks uh, say that people are praying now more than they've ever done before in their lives. And we're of a generation that's not been in need as it is today and not had the fears that, uh, that they have today. And so prayers are increasing. My friends who are holding prayer meetings by internet say that there are more people at the prayer meetings now than they normally have over the course of a year in their buildings. That may be something to do with being uh, able to pray from your home rather than go out and travel. Uh, but it may also be to do with, with actually people's desire to pray. Paul is writing to a church in Philippi in Philippians 4. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer is not just something for hard times, it's something for all times. But in hard times it has a special poignancy, doesn't it? Uh, it's, it's a sign of, of faith and of hope. And when we pray to the Lord Jesus Christ for help, it's a, a sign of faith in our hearts. And it often thrives, like these buttercups. Uh, when the ground is hard, life is hard and difficult. Well, I commend prayer to you and I encourage you to keep praying and let the peace of God uh, come to your hearts and to your souls as you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, from me and these beautiful buttercups, and this crazy dog who seems to, you know, he ate some one day and they made him really quite sick. And so I'm just watching him now, wondering if he'll, if he'll, uh, he'll eat some more. May God bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace.